So we have just arrived at an undisclosed location because mushroom picking locations are very secretive. This is uh, people's bread and butters to know the secret spot. So we've arrived here. Um, we're with our guide, Hans. He's in the bush already. Uh, let's go in there and see what we can actually find this year. Wow, you lifted that up and it almost looks like dust. It is almost dust, yes. This time of the year, this stuff is usually wet and green. It's brown. Let's go through here a little bit. Just be careful when you go with your cameras, you don't fall on your nose. This is typical mushroom area. They love the moss, they love mature trees. This is what we need. And this year, unfortunately, there's nothing. Nothing. Wow, so show me, where would you normally be looking to see? Well, when you want to find the pine mushrooms, when you walk through the pine mushroom areas, you, lit, you see little bumps. Like, underneath the moss, and it's so dry, that's where they usually grow, underneath the moss, they come up. And when they push through it, they are different. They're still white, you know, but they're not the same quality anymore, and so. Same as chanterelles. Chanterelles grow in similar areas. Right. You know, but it's so dry. And not even the, the stinky mushrooms, I call them the, the poisonous one. They usually survive everything. Nothing, nothing here. So foraging for mushrooms might be fun and, and uh, recreational for some people, but for others, it's actually big business. To learn more about the economics of it, I'm here at Ponderosa Mushrooms. We're gonna talk to one of the two key players in the province who deal with wild mushrooms. Let's go find Joe Salvo. <laughs> right. Perfect. We're ready to go. So oh, that's what our beautiful chanterelles look like, which we miss terribly. So there were some then out of Haraguay? We are getting a few. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Not much to speak of, but that's a whole weekend's pick right here. Typical mushroom harvester's price for ch fresh chanterelle typically this time of year would be two to four dollars a pound. We're at ten now. We did get a nice period of rain up north in the terrace region, so we've had a nice flush of pine mushrooms or matsutake mushrooms out of there for the last month that we've been dealing with. Once now Terrace is starting to wane, it's starting to fade away, and we have no new areas to go to. A week from now, we might not have any pine mushrooms to export. The pickers rely on it, the local economies rely on it, you know, and so there's a definite impact, you know, economically. Look how deep. Yeah. There's nothing here. You know, what, is, what does it say to you when, you, when you're seeing the... It hurts. Yeah. So what do you want people what do you want people to know about that? Well, as long as we don't smarten up with our excessive use of gasoline and even electricity, we'll not we're not gonna have this stuff for very long. Oh we'll, we'll have it. Nature will always look after itself, I think. But we have to take care of it a little bit more too. <laughs> 